All right, here we are, rounding through the solar system to the very last stop on the last of the ice giants, which is Neptune. The interesting thing about Neptune is this is the first planet to be mathematically derived before it was actually discovered. What I mean by that is that when they looked at the orbit of Uranus, they found that it was actually had a kind of a pull to it uh, that didn't mess, match with uh, Newtonian theory at the time. So rather than scrap the Newtonian theory, they figured there was another massive object out there that was actually pulling Uranus in one direction. They even named it, they called it Neptune. And it wasn't until some time later that they turned their telescopes out and they actually discovered Neptune at exactly the place where they derived that it was supposed to be. So because the effects of this was to pull Uranus to one side, what we have is we have three banded sides that are all pulled to the same side. So in this case, in my case, it's going to be the red side, the yellow side, and the green side. And we've seen this configuration before of three bandage and three non-bandage, which was, um, I believe, the Mars cube. But the difference is that because it's pulled gravitationally to one side, it makes for the solving very different. So, once again, abracadabra. And we're scrambled. All right, so how are we going to navigate our way through this one? But we're going to start off much the same way we did with the other Jovian planets by getting across at our one of our um, banded sides and just working from there to get the cross along here. Now, before we get the cross here, we have to deal with the fact that we have not just one um, non-banded side like with uh, Uranus, but we have two. So as I'm moving the white ones in, as I'm moving uh, and building these sides, the first preparatory stage is going to be to put the inner middles of our, or inner edges of our non-banded sides in right now, because it's going to be difficult once we're trying to get it in to move it into position as these are fixed. So you're going to see why that is later. So it's pretty easy uh, for the green. We'll check to see. Here's a green one over here. Okay, so here's our, here's our green. Move in a red from somewhere. We'll move this up, move our green in, move this down, and here it is. So we have our red and we have our green. And it's going to become apparent why I did that in a little bit. So now we're free to put in the inner uh, middles and not worry about these guys because we can move this and it's, it's not going to affect it. So we'll do it any way that we can here. Move this around. Again, we're not worried about these guys at the moment. In, up, and down. All right. So we have our inner cross, and these are in position. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these outer edges in first because it's easy. These are already in line. So we'll start off with the red and white. Here's our red and white over here. So we'll uncouple it from here. Bang. Zoom. Now the good thing about this is... Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this where the white is facing up so I can move the white in. And I'm going to do that by that algorithm that we've used in the Saturn cube and the Uranus cube to move it from here to here and here to here. Those that have not seen that will just kind of review. If I want to move it to here, then I'm going to go like F-I-L-F-L-I. Here it is here. Doesn't mess that up. And then do it again. And it puts it up here. So I'm going to move it just to the side of the red. I don't have to fill the red inner one, but just the white inner one. The red inner one is always there. It's not going to go anywhere. So this goes up here, move this in, and then bring it down. And it's as simple as that. Same thing with the green one. Here's a green one here. We'll just move it up here, uncouple it, move it back. And so too, I'm going to move it to where, well, the white side's already up. So move this white side in, move it here, and move it down. So we have our red and we have our green. Now, not quite so simple with these guys. Find another white, here's another white here. Now in these cases, I have to fill in the orange side. I have to fill in the um, inner one. So we'll just move this out, uncouple it, and move this back down. So I'm gonna move a yellow one, uh, orange one rather, in here. I can borrow it from this guy here and down. 
Once I do that, I'm going to point the white one up. I'm going to go this way, so to move from here to here, because whatever is facing me is the one that's going to be pointing up. That's going to be F, R, I, F, I, R, and there it is over there. So now, uh, uh, I, I put the orange one in here because I can't rely on it being here since it won't move it into position. I'm just going to move the white one up, grab it, nab it, and drag it down. So we have this in place, this in place, this in place. So I think you get the picture. Find the white and blue. It's over here. So I, I have to fill a blue one in. I'm going to point it up. Find the blue over here. Okay, now I'm just going to move it to where the white one is up. You've got to be careful because I can't move it into the bandage side or else I'm going to decouple this. Hope that made sense. But anyway, so here it is over here, just abutting this blue side. Move the white one up, grab it, drag it. Okay, so we've got our cross here and you can see how important it was to prep it by putting these non-bandaged side sides in.